Hey, what's up, guys? Me and Mir are here to discuss the aftermath of Evil Japan. Mir, what did you think of the tournament? Pretty good? Oh, definitely. Definitely pretty stacked tournament. Oh, dude, it was like 2,000 entries. It was hella stacked. Really, really nice. And we're gonna get another Evil sometime around summer. They said like August, I think it was. So, mm -hmm. should get yeah, the lineup soon. In August. Now, my biggest thing, before we talk about the players here, we're mostly gonna talk about top eight, but I just wanna talk about like the stream was very, very smooth. I mean, it was down for a little bit during the top eight, but just in general, like I was kind of worried about Evil Japan because of, you know, the whole SBO stream and I got nightmares from that, man. Yeah, yeah, and Japan's not really known for the best quality stream. Yeah, but yeah. We so, got a good quality yeah. stream. But, you know, they had like the whole Evo crew there to make sure everything was running well. So I'm really, yeah, really yeah, exactly. uh, happy about that. No announcements, though. No huge mm -hmm. announcements, Street Fighter Five wise. Yeah, anyways. not, not, not for Street Fighter Five, no. But at least we we got the um, the evil lineup announcement, or at least the announcement of the announcement. Yes, <laughs> it's gonna yes. Be in February. I mean, I'm sure we can figure out most of it ourselves, but yeah. Yeah. So that's basically the announcement. In general, before we discuss top eight, I mean, there was a lot of cool like new tech and setups we've seen. Just because this is the first giant, giant tournament of season three for Street Fighter Five. Yeah. Um, especially Rashid, man. A lot of stuff with Rashid. There's a lot yeah, of. We've seen players. a lot of characters use uh, V Trigger too, mm -hmm. so a lot of new stuff. A lot of Ryu players too, but for some reason we barely saw Donkey Kick, which drove me crazy. <laughs> There's so many times I saw like a Ryu player like do, like score a medium into something, but then they go EX Tatsu instead of Donkey Kick, and it just drove me crazy, man. So there's a lot of adjustments. I mean, there's a lot of players that are definitely caught on to Season 3 way faster than others. Way faster. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you can you can look at Top 8 and just see that there's a couple of players who's, who have, like, a really good affinity, I guess, with their new V-Triggers. Mm -hmm. And some that aren't. But that leads us to our first discussion. Let's talk about Human Bomb and MOV. So Matt, MOV makes yes. it a top eight in a lot of big turns. I've noticed for sure. Like he's oh yeah, he's really consistent. Um, I guess with Human Bomb and MOV, MOV, I don't want to talk about their matches specifically, but more about just both of their Chun Li's. First off, we're seeing Chun Li again, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And um, Human Bomb prefers V Trigger two, and MOV yes. prefers V Trigger one. I personally think uh, that MOV is a better Chun Li player, but he was using the worst V Trigger. I think that let's just say that MOV plays in a very unorthodox way for a Chun Li player. Unorthodox? Like, he's what do you very mean? Aggre like, what do you well, he's very aggressive. Aggressive? How's that unorthodox, though? Well, Chun Li is not an aggressive character. She's not designed to. Be. Oh, okay. I guess, but like um, the instant air legs and all that. I don't know. I don't know. Well, she has tools to be, you know, on the offensive, but yeah. mainly she's a poking character, yeah. right? Like that's that's how she's designed. Mm -hmm. And MOV is just for hard kick five times in a row oh, no. <laughs> I know he always does it after a fireball too after every t every fireball he always goes forward hard kick out because he's fishing for those crush yeah players. I've noticed that he tried to land it needy multiple times yeah and like an actual neutral without you know a wake up situation yeah and he got it a couple of times other times he messed it up and got punished I, <laughs> so that was interesting I think MOV needs to use V trigger 2 to move forward to go to the next level yeah I think I think I think V trigger 2 probably suits him suits his play style a little bit better yeah like, Human Bomb was like, he was trying guard crush setups and a whole bunch of things with V-Trigger 2, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, both of them got bopped, so let's move on. <laughs> um, the biggest match, I think the biggest match of the tournament was Tokido versus Storm Kubo. That mm -hmm. match was crazy. That match yeah, was that, so definitely, crazy. definitely a crazy match. Dude, I was cheering for Tokido, like, so much. Like, Abigail, like, I like <laughs> Abigail, but damn, I wanted Tokido to win that match badly, dude. <laughs> there are so many crazy highlights to that match. Um, first off, uh, there was that EX grab that Kubo did, and he landed the, the back hard punch loops on him. Why is that still in the game, by the way? Why did they not patch that <laughs> shit? But anyways, yeah, Tokido died from Maybe, maybe they really liked it. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, they must really like it. They must want you to like, give a reason to still use V-Trigger 1 compared to 2, right? Yeah, I guess that's true. And then the second highlight of that was uh, Tokido did a missed DP. And mixed, missed EX, I think he landed a, a red fireball and he tried dashing forward into an EXDP and it whipped and then against Abigail, man, you cannot, you cannot whip a DP or it's lights out. And he had V-Trigger and everything. Yeah. yeah. Tokido was still on the way up of the DP and mm -hmm. uh, Storm Kubo already activated V-Trigger ready for him to land mm -hmm. and well, we all knew how it went. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, there was another interesting part of the match too. Kubo was on match point to take out Tokido, okay? 
and there is a point where Tokido with the DP again, and then I saw Kubo's V gauge as Tokido was falling down, and I was screaming at my TV, and I'm like, it's over, it's over, he has V trigger, it's over. But for some reason, Kubo didn't, he went crush counter, and I guess he didn't realize he had V trigger, and he didn't activate, but he, he literally missed lethal. He had Tokido. He just did a combo. It was almost dizzy. It still did a lot. But if he would have activated, if he did the double hard punch loop, that would have been lights up for Tokido. He would have lost that match. It was crazy. Yeah, even, even with the other skill. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then right after, uh, Tokido basically came back. He did like an autocorrect DP. And then he had Demon uh, set up ready to go, right? Yeah. And I mean, we knew he was going to try to land a Raging Demon. And so did Kubo. And Tokido actually, what he did is he did standing medium kick. And then he did a, a jumping air fireball right away because Kubo was holding up because he was scared he's gonna get demoned, right? And Tokido hit him in the air with the fireballs and then, and then he got hit by the demon anyways. Well, I mean, it, it's it's really scary to deal with a Kubo when he has so many options and then you also have to be worried of a one frame command grab that takes away like 400 life. I know, man. More than that. I know. It's, it's ridiculous, dude. So yeah, um, anyways, guys, check out these highlights. I'll show the clips right now to that match because it was, I seriously think it was the best match. Steven now, Oppie's going a little harder this round. Oh, oh he got him. got him off the trigger activation. Yeah, no there meter goes. available, but still huge Look damage. This, this actually this. might be enough. Oh, oh humanity. Just sitting there. Oh, this is so oh, bad. Wait a minute, is he dead? I think he might be dead. I think he might be dead. I'm the crowd sure is going dead. nuts. The oh, stars stand wide. It's not right. It's not right. A couple of guesses could be the end of him here. Oh, oh. he went big, and this is gonna be. He's on. He's got V trigger available. Is he gonna cancel? Doesn't even not use quite it just yet. Wow, cross cut, uppercut. Tokido still alive. There's the V-Trigger. He's about to, he's got Demon available. We'll probably not kill him at this, this, uh... Oh, he faked it! He actually called out the jump there from the is. Demon! He got him this and time! Got That's him. gonna connect to Kido. Still proving. Okay, moving on, we have, uh, Itibashi, uh, versus Daigo. So this was interesting because... Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the, the pools, Mira, but, uh, Itibashi mm -hmm. was using a lot of Abigail as well. Yeah, I saw. I saw that he used Abigail. Usually what he did, and there was an exhibition too, but basically he would like, he would use Zangief and then if he needed to come back, he would, he would just pick Abigail. But against <laughs> Daigo, um, the Guile matchup, which is very favorable in Guile's favor, notoriously favorable, um, he preferred to use Zangief. So what, why do well, you I think guess that there's, is? There's some mystery to this, because there's been that money match that they played versus each other, mm -hmm. where it was more like a... A charity match because all the money that was put in was put in by Daigo. It was a fun like, season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't want uh, in a like in a very I would say good display of skill. Daigo was but... sandbagging though, man. You know he does that. You know he does it. He was hustling <laughs> from hard. Trigger two, trigger two wasn't even out. Dude, yet. he got hustled, man. That's just the way it is. <laughs> so well, anyways, so I so I got baited yeah. into picking Zangi, and, and then he got bodied. But he could have easily switched to Abigail, like after he realized, you know, the curtains were closing. I don't know. Maybe maybe he didn't have the. Dude, I'm telling uh, you, the, the conviction. If you think Gal versus Zangief was switch. hard, Guile with V Trigger Two versus Zangief is another story completely. Oh yeah, when you can cover the whole screen in DC. I mean, we'll talk about good. Daigo in a second here, but yes, that match was pretty free for Daigo. It was very convincing. I'm really surprised Itabashi didn't use Abigail. I mean, I'm sure uh, Itabashi is way more comfortable with Zangief since he's mastered that character, but. Itabashi's uh, Abigail was actually really, really good. And I'm not saying that the Abigail matchup is any better. I'm sure that's a tough matchup as well, but I mean, he should have at least uh, mm -hmm. tried for sure. Yeah, Gal is definitely one of the problem matchups for Abigail as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe maybe just felt more confident with Zengi if it didn't turn out to, mm -hmm. to be, you know, the, the right choice. Abigail is definitely public enemy number one right now this season. Uh, but he didn't mm -hmm. he hasn't won yet, so we'll see until mm -hmm. then when everyone will, will start complaining Well, he is public enemy number one, but there are others that I would say slip through the cracks mm -hmm. I mean, I, I always mention Akuma in this case. Oh, yeah, I know I know but since Tokido likes Akuma he gets a pass, right? 
So. <laughs> yeah, that's just about. the way it is, man. Seems about right. Just the way it is. Okay. Uh, Daigo versus Tokido. Free for Daigo. Mm -hmm. Absolutely free. Yeah. It was very interesting because uh, they always went toe to toe in the past. Yep. Usually Tokido came out. Yep. Came out a, a winner. Mm -hmm. But this time, yeah, Daigo very convincing performance. Yep. Um, uh, maybe maybe Tokido didn't measure the distance correctly from the the screen. <laughs> with the, the right tape distance. measure? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, with the tape measure. Ah, <laughs> uh, that V trigger too. I'm telling you, man. But you know, Tokido has been uh, switched between both V triggers as well for different matchups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, and Akuma's V trigger too is very powerful too because you can do a lot of crazy stuff on like his block. Especially the corner, yeah. As well as you know damage. Absolutely. Yeah. Like EX Red Fireball into EX Fireball into another EX For days. Red Fireball, you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> then you get thrown in you die. Next up, we got Daigo versus Infiltration. Free. Again. <laughs> For Infiltration. <laughs> yeah, but it, uh, the other way around. <laughs> the other way around. Dude, Definitely, Infiltration body yeah, Daigo. You, you can tell that Daigo, but in general, this this whole tournament, yeah. uh, a lot of players had trouble dealing with Minot because she has deceiving range on a lot of things with the orb. Mm -hmm. And now that she has Soul Spark, the new... Uh, the new special move mm -hmm. that they gave her in, with her kid edition. Uh, she's definitely much bigger, like much bigger of a threat for a lot of, you know, in a lot of matchups she can just bully you around now. I don't think people realize oh. how much of a buff that was to Minot, that new move. You know, you think it's just, oh, okay, it's got a big hitbox and all that, but the important part is that it sends the orb back to her immediately. And that's a yes. huge deal, man. For Minot to get that so orb, like, that was one of her biggest weaknesses, just throwing that out. And she was scared because she gets knocked down. It's lights out, but that soul spark, I mean, solves that problem. Yeah, so. yeah, that's that's true. And and like you said, it covers a big portion of the screen. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed in the match is that Daigo was getting hit by by Minot's jump ins or pokes from long range. Mm -hmm. Like he probably wasn't accustomed to the you know the ranges in which um, Minot usually fights. You know, mm -hmm. and he was getting out zoned as Gal, which was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyways, free. Infiltration. Free. So, now let's talk about the last big matchup. Um, John Takeuchi versus Infiltration. So let's talk about the winners finals well, and the grand finals. What's up? Yeah, exactly. This match happened twice. Yeah. Yeah. And the first time we saw Infiltration go with Minot again. Mm -hmm. But then, he switched to Jury. <laughs> <laughs> And that was he came close. Like, crazy enough. He, it was enough yeah. for him to get information, you know, I'm like, hmm, maybe I can do this with Jerry, right? Because when they, uh, John Takeuchi takes out Infiltration and sends him to losers. Infiltration fights his way back, yes. and then when they fight each other in Grand Finals, Infiltration just starts the whole thing off with Jerry and plays her all the way, resets the bracket, and comes mm -hmm. back. There's a lot of interesting things with that match, though. John Takeuchi was dropping a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Mm -hmm, that's true. Yeah. And he also got hit by like every wake up DP. Yeah, Infiltration did like 10 EX DPs. No exaggeration. And he landed like mm -hmm. what, 90%? I think he only missed one. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think only one got blocked. Yeah. It was a really weird match, but you know, obviously Infiltration played very, very well. Very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, with your, and you could tell infiltration like when he plays, you know, like you said, he's he's always act proactively pressing buttons and stuff. It's just really good. And a lot of good yeah. reads. So. Yeah, he's a, he's a very active player, and although John seemed to know the matchup at least a little bit, yeah. because we we saw certain like certain situations yeah. where, for example, he used the EX dive kick, well not dive kick, the eagle spike to go over projectiles and stuff. There there were situations where you could see that he probably knew part of the matchup mm -hmm. at least. Maybe he wasn't ready for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I think John and, was just he was so just so aggressive, right? Because Getting hit by that many EXDPs EX shows you something, right? That like he was being overly yeah, aggressive yeah. in the matchup for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's interesting to me. I'm mean, like yeah. Jury, regarded as one of the worst characters against Rashid this season, regarded as one of the best characters. I mean, that's crazy. It really shows you that any character can win. It's it's really yeah. nice. To and, see. and Jury got some buffs. She did. Uh, Everybody did. Definitely not like. Definitely, we cannot say that now oh, because she won a tournament, mm -hmm. even though it was a pre-stacked tournament. Mm -hmm. We cannot say that you know all jury is top tier because of this, especially when Minat basically carried. Yeah, let's let's the, not let's not give all the credit to Jury, man. I mean, Infiltration used Minot literally ninety percent of the tournament until like the winners finals. I mean, can't mm -hmm. just say Jury won, yeah, exactly. you know, the whole thing. So, mm -hmm. Infiltration won, man. So if, yeah, exactly. It, it was the it was the right pick for that matchup. Yeah, but John Tagiuchi looks really really strong. So we'll see. 
his adjustments going forward. And then Infiltration, I mean, first person to win two evils. It's really cool that someone who won Evil Japan won uh, Evil US. So, or Evil mm-hmm. World, I guess, we'll say. Yeah, Evil World, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like I said, no announcements, no news. We didn't get a Blanca trailer, Blanca stage. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll get some CPT news soon when they're going to announce the prize pool and, you know, the first turn, probably final round, right? And we'll see what happens, man. Yeah, maybe we'll get that Alex trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to mention before we close this out? Um, no, nothing special, except that the tournament was definitely a really good watch, very interesting matches. Uh, like we said, there were some which were definitely worthy of note, and yeah, it was a really good turn. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Season 3, man. I mean, Daigo is coming really, really close now. That <laughs> Beatrix 2 is going to carry him. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, let me know what you guys think of the tournament in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and be sure to like the video. And yeah, we'll keep you guys posted. Till next time. Take care, everyone.